Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video on Salesforce Gold. So guys, this is going to be a video related to REST API thing. This is a very good example for using the REST API with your Lightning Web component. So in today's video, guys, we'll try to get the random user's information using a web URL, using a website. So basically, we'll be getting profile picture, name, uh, and maybe we can have phone, email, and address also, okay? And we'll be doing it using a Lightning Web component and REST APIs. So let's start today's video guys. I'm Kapil, your host and you're watching Salesforce Bold. All right guys, so we'll be trying to get some default random users information from a website. Of course, that website is open source and uh, uh, the website is used to uh, get the default user information. So it is absolutely legal. So no need to worry. So guys, uh, let me show you the output first. So this is the website from which we'll be trying to get the default user information or random user information. So the website is randomuser.me and this will be the output in our lightning web component. So here basically I'm having the call out on the load of this page. So whenever you will reload the page, you will be having a different random user data here. Okay, it seems like somehow it gets stuck. Uh, let me change my connection here. Okay, it should work now. Let's reload the page and try again. No, I think my session got expired. So I have to log in again. So this is my org and I will just do open default org. Here you go. All right, so let's open the application with LBC stack and random user. See, so we are getting name, email, and phone here. So let's say if I try to reload the page. So there's a different name, different email, different phone number with a with a different picture of course so let me just explain the functionality so guys if you are wondering like how you can do api connectivity with a lightning web component or with lightning components so guys this video is for you in this video i'll explain like uh, what i did to get these values from a website using the rest api so guys uh, as i said like this is the website uh, to which uh, you may make rest calls and api calls and uh, using that you can get this response so this is the complete result what you can have from this website uh, here they are returning multiple things like uh, we are having gender location email date of birth age uh, phone cell id picture and uh, password also oh <laughs> so somehow they are returning some kind of username and password and i'm pretty much sure like that is going to be a fake password so don't try it at your home okay so let me show you like what I did to uh, get the values. So guys, this is my lightning web component, get user data. So I'm basically having nothing here. It's just some static values. So the main uh, thing of which I'm having in my Apex. So in my Apex guys, I'm having a function get user data. Okay. So first of all, I'm creating an endpoint here. So this is the endpoint to which we are making the API callout. And before that, make sure you go to remote site setting. And you have to uh, you have to create a new site for this API callout. So you just have to click on new remote site. You may notice like this is my site random user data and this is the random user dot mean the website name. Okay. After that only you will be able to make the callouts. And later on I'm just creating a HTTP connection. I'm creating HTTP request, setting up the endpoint which will be the URL of course setting up the method which will be get in this case okay and then i'm trying to retrieve the response using http response and we are getting the response in response dot get body okay now the thing is you need to pass this data from this apex to your lightning web component of course so you you should not pass this data directly as a string as a you know as a random json string instead of that you should deserialize it in an object or in a class you know just to differentiate the data like uh, parameters and other things so for that 
we have created a inner class here so this is my class and here i am having just a list of result wrapper the result wrapper is here okay and this result wrapper i'm passing few parameter which i want to display on my page so i'm not passing all the data to my page i'm just passing few specific parameter so this is also good practice like you should only pass that data which which you need to display on the page itself okay so guys to uh, send the data first you have to create an inner class or you can also create a separate descriptor class also just make sure the parameters in it should be aura enabled because like we are going to use it in lightning web component so here uh, I have created a class result you can name it anything okay so first thing we are getting from this response from that response is the result so this is the first parameter we are getting and this is a list of course list of different different objects so first I am creating a list of wrapper so wrapper uh, this is basically another inner class I would say and the name should be same of that uh, uh, data I mean this this name should match with the API name otherwise you know it won't be mapping the parameters correctly so the name is result you may notice here result okay and in result like uh, we have to get gender so gender is directly available in result so you may just directly use it so this is my wrapper uh, result wrapper so here I'm just having the parameter which needs which I want uh, to get from that uh, API request so first I'm having public string result then I'm having public string email because email is also directly available it is not inside any child or any array okay but let's say if you would like to get name picture so you see the name name is also a array or a list here and in that we are having title first name and last name so you cannot just retrieve it directly like using like public string name so for that also you have to create another class in which you will be having first name last name and maybe title also so the same way like we did for result so the same way we are doing for name also then you may refer your class here with the same name uh, that you are getting from the api so that's why i'm having public name name is the name of my class this could be anything you just need to keep this name same okay so that is the only way you may map the parameter from your api response to this class this is, so the same thing I did for uh, picture so for the profile picture if you will notice like for profile picture we are receiving an array here or an object here and in that object we are having three attributes uh, the picture large medium or thumbnail okay so for that also I have created another class picture because we cannot uh, we cannot refer to the inner attributes directly without referring to, to the outer attribute so in this case of these results the outer attribute will be the picture and the inner attribute will be like uh, small medium and large the size of the picture so here i'm having another class for picture and in that i'm having just a public string large because i'm getting only the large picture url from uh, from the call out okay and then later on you just have to go back to your main function okay and here you may create a create an object of your class which was result in my case and you may deserialize the json to your class okay so by deserializing the json to your class it will automatically map the json parameter with your class parameter if they are having the similar name and the similar data type as well so let's say if you're trying to retrieve an object from the json let's say if i talk about the same thing the name object so if you try to retrieve the name object from json and if you're trying to binding it in a string that it is not going to happen here it will definitely throw an error like you cannot map the primitive data type with a different data so you have to keep the same data type here as well if you're trying to retrieve an object then you have to keep the data type as an object if you're trying to retrieve a string you have to keep the data type as an string here okay so here we just deserialize the JSON to the inner class and then we are returning that inner class directly here. Okay. And definitely, I mean, it is going to be a, you know, try and catch block just to catch the error. Now in the JavaScript side, guys, I'm just importing my function here first. Okay. And after that, I'm having the user data. This is the main parameter, main attribute in which I'm having the complete response. And then I'm having few more parameters like picture, name, email, and phone just to refer the data separately in each parameter. Then I'm calling this function on the load of this page. Okay. Now to get the data and user data, you need to parse the data. You need to get it as a stringify data and then you have to parse the data in JSON format. Okay. 
and so here basically I'm doing result dot results because the attribute name was results okay and if you may notice so we are having the square brackets here so it means this is going to be an array kind of a thing or a list maybe but uh, we are having we are only retrieving the single record here so we may directly pass like zero here in the array so basically we will be getting the complete result in this user data then I'm separating the result from the user data. Like if I need to get the picture, so I'm getting user data dot picture dot large. If I need to get email, so email was directly available like phone. So I'm doing this dot user data email and the same I'm doing for phone as well. Okay. But if you'll notice the name here, so I'm doing this dot user data, then I'm getting the name object. Then from that name object, I'm trying to get this first name and last name. Okay. And here I'm just trying to print it just to check the result and i would say like you should also do this to see the output and whatever you are getting and on the html side i have just divided the panel into two parts uh, the size is four and eight and i'm just having the data here so if you try the same functionality so this is going to be the output for it so each time when you will refresh the page you will be getting a different user data. i don't know like where <laughs> are you going to use it so it was just like I found this website pretty cool and I thought like it is worth sharing with you. Maybe you know in future you need to create something where you need to display some random user data. I don't know like what will be the purpose of it but it is what it is. And for example let me try to get another thing and show it to you. So let's try to get age of the user okay. So if you'll notice the age is in the DOB which is also object. So for that you will just go to the class itself and let's create the DOB here. So it will be public class DOB and from that we will try to get, uh, we don't need the date, let's take the age only. So you may take it like public string age like this and then you have to bind it in the wrapper also. Okay, this ought to correct. Or enable public, then my class name. And then the parameter name there. Okay. So we have binded it to the class also. Now, here, let's take another parameter. Uh, let's name it age. And we can do this. This dot age is equal to this dot user data dot dov dot age. Uh, dov dot age. Yeah, this should be fine. And on the HTML side also, let's print it. Hi, my name is and comma, I am I am uh, I mean the variable then years old. Okay. Or let's say like let's normally use it like this. Uh, Let's print it. It should be fine. Okay, this should do the trick. Let's deploy it quickly. And okay, it is getting deployed. Okay, it is deployed. Let's go to this. Okay, we are getting the age also. So hello, my name is, I can't read it, age is 68, okay, let's refresh the result once. Okay, so that's how guys, I mean, you may get the data and uh, this could be a very good practice, you know, for to test the REST API, like how you may work with them, how you can send the JSON data from FX to LWC, okay, and I will also share the link of that website in the description of this video, so you may also try the same if you would like to do it. Alright, so if you like today's video guys, a subscribe to the channel will be awesome. I'll see you in the next one guys. Thanks for watching.